So we're here at Weaver State. I've got no microphone, so I don't know how people are going to hear us. But we're out here tailgating. Everyone's getting set up. It's about two and a, three and a half hours till game time. You kind of see what everything looks like. Absolute beautiful setting for college football. So what we're going to start doing here is we're going to start reviewing stadiums. That's what we're going to do. I Jap, you can't ignore it. I'm transforming now. These cars and planes, I'm always boarding. Just out touring down in Charlotte, like I play for Hornets. When I'm performing, never boring. Now you can't afford it. Champagne Perrier, finish friends on my face. Looking like I'm from the D. D's no Cartiers. Pockets deep, 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 bro. I can make it in my seat. So we're entering fourth quarter. It's 27 10 Weaver State. Um, not looking good. Good defensive battle. Scoop and score is kind of in the difference in this one. Just see if we were come back. Could be an upset so far. Stadium really cool. All right, so we are driving back from Stewart Stadium in Ogden, Utah, bringing you the first episode, uh, I guess, or whatever of the Way Fan Way Section, whatever it's going to end up being called. If you are curious on my take on the game, that's where the first big shout out comes in. You're going to have to check it out, uh, podcast, or if it's played in your local market, FCS Nation Radio. Uh, thanks to Kevin and the guys over there for getting me hooked up with the media credential. Uh, so I was able to kind of bring this game to you in a different experience uh, than just the fan one because I also do a little bit of sports photography. And it allowed me to get on the field to be able to do that and kind of help with a different perspective of judging some of this stuff, especially in terms of Weber State, which I think is where it's important. So without further ado, if you're interested in takes on the game, SES Nation Radio, and big, huge shout out to them for making all this possible and allowing the first episode to be brought to you. Uh, the second thing is covering what we're going to be grading everybody on, right? Tailgating. It's tailgating, in my mind, is super important. It's where the game starts. It's where the game ends. It's what really sets the tone and closes and, you know, bookends the day tailgating the lot the experience before from breakfast lunch bars etc all that comes into the, the tailgating atmosphere the places you need to go if you are in town second game day atmosphere is it a place where it is cool to be a part of is it like hotty toddy is it like uh florida state when they're doing the chop is it like uh happy valley when they do the whiteout or is it like virginia tech or the bounce house, when the bounce house is bouncing, you know, like, is the atmosphere fun? Is there traditions and, like, dotting the I Ohio State? Are those things there? Is it worth just going to experience a game there as a neutral? Um, and also, does it get loud? That all comes into game day experience. Like, is the game fun? Is the game fun, basically, is what this comes down to. Stadium. Stadium is a pretty important thing. Uh, because some of us probably are aware that like uh, sometimes you have to use the bathroom and when the bathroom line is 20 minutes it's kind of annoying because not only are you missing the game but you also are kind of dealing with uh, you know happen to go uh, stadiums important and along with that too like is it a beautiful stadium or is it a generic stadium is it a stadium that you should put on a bucket list to see or is it just like a place that you happen to be at at the moment all that will kind of be factored into stadiums and last but not least affordability affordability is kind of important right but it's also not important it depends on what you're looking for some places are always going to be more expensive than others. Some are going to be cheaper. Now, with affordability, we're not factoring in at all. We will not be looking at the um, travel. Travel is excluded. This is strictly the game. So if you live close and it's a more expensive place to go to, you'll know. If you live far away but it's a more cheaper play, like game to go to and enjoy, you'll know. And it'll help you make that decision on whether you should try to attend a game there or not. So there's the criteria. We got it out of the way. Let's get into Stewart Stadium in Ogden, Utah. Now, the game we got to attend 
was a big one. One of the biggest ones the Weber State Wildcats have ever had the pleasure of hosting. It was number three James Madison coming to town to play the number nine Weber State Wildcats uh, in a night game. 6.30 kickoff for perspective as we talk about everything else. With that, let's get to the tailgate. Most important thing, set the tone, right? Uh, I had the privilege of, uh, there'll be a lot of thank yous and shout outs in this video. The first major one, uh, got breakfast with the Weber State Weekly guys and also uh, Tom Lakey, Tom Lake. Some, that Everybody who I thank, gonna meet, was a part of this, Twitter and everything in the bio, check them out, all great people. Cause if you ever go to Weber, in Stewart Stadium, these are the people you're gonna wanna hit up. So just do it, right? We go to Criddle's Cafe. Shout out to Jeff Criddle. Um, awesome restaurant, love the food. He got a chance to kind of talk to him through the window. Nice guy, uh, staff is amazing. If you are in Ogden, Utah, most places when I do this for tailgating, there will be a bar you have to go to to play an event or something that you will have to see. If you are in Ogden, Utah, it is Criddle's Cafe. The cinnamon roll is the size of a steering wheel. I mean, not actually, but it is huge. It's not like your little cinnamon bun you get out of the freaking Pillsbury Doughboy can, right? This is like, it had its own plate. Not like a saucer plate, like a plate plate. It was delicious. We had six of us at the table and we finished about half of it, right? Like, it's huge, ginormous, and delicious. Probably more importantly, it's delicious. Gotta start out at Criddle's Cafe. Now when I was there and I was talking to the Weeper State Weekly guys, I was like, so what's the plan for the rest of the day, you know? Um, tailgating. Not necessarily a thing. Like they said, uh, Saturday they all had some stuff to do. They were going to come down, but they had some prep they were going to do to come down. Like I said, kickoff 6.30, they are like, we'll be at a lot 3.45, you know, 4 o'clock-ish. Cool. Uh, being, to getting into sports photography, I was like, all right, well, I'm gonna go to the stadium right now and go take some photos. Did that, ran into Tailgate and Weber and Chris, F-E-R-R-E, -E, uh, fur, 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 uh, murder the name, but Twitter's, the, that's the more important part. Um, ran into them, only people in the lot, awesome. Talked to them, I only had the one battery, I said, all right, well, here's the deal, I'm gonna go run back to my hotel, I'm gonna grab my stuff, and I'll see you guys in probably like an hour because it was about 20 minutes to where I was staying from uh, Weber State's campus. Go grab my stuff. Awesome. I get back in. There's five people or four or five more people in the lot, including some family of the of some players that had like rotisserie rib making with a charcoal bed thing. Um, and it only got bigger from there. Uh, Brett Hine, who covers the team for the Examiner, which is like, I think it's the Examiner. Either way, the local kind of newspaper there. He had a tweet. Uh, sorry if I quote it wrong, but boom, video editing, it's on the screen. You read it to me if I get it wrong. But uh, an hour and a half before the game, it was about as many, if not the most cars he's ever seen in a Weber State parking lot. Uh, that was awesome. While we were there at uh, tailgating Weber and Chris's tailgate uh, in their RV, two of those huge bus RVs roll in, these other guys roll in with their RVs, and then they make a U-shape, and then they have a horse trailer with a TV, then James Madison people start showing up, and obviously tailgating school, they tailgate. Because that's what I'm used to. I'm used to 9 a.m. to it doesn't matter the kickoff time, you tailgate. After the game, you tailgate. And you got that. And it sounds like Weber doesn't normally do that. So that was awesome to see. I've been saying it. Make a t-shirt, Wildcat Rack. 9-18-2021, Weber State became a tailgating school. It's only uphill from here. It was awesome to see. That being said, you are in the state of Utah. Some things you got to be aware of, everybody. Obviously, if you weren't aware, that's where Weber State is. Um, obviously, a lot of religious folks, um, which means uh, alcohol consumption is not at an all-time high. That being said, it was so cool to see so many people jacked up on Mountain Dew having a blast. Um, now, for you adult beverage drinkers, I did indulge in one uh, beer before the game. I was told that people do do it, and nobody seems to hassle them about it as long as you're not a dumb dumb. So, if you are one of those people, and you do want to enjoy it more of an adult beverage, you can. It's just everybody else, that, not everybody, but a lot of people there are having fun without it. Which is just, it's so cool to see that that's something that can happen, right? You don't need alcohol to have fun. Um, and it should never be something you're doing to have fun. Now off the soapbox. Uh, but it was cool to see basically a sober tailgate. They did have a corporate tailgate set up for donors and then some other stuff. Uh, wasn't as popular. So it was cool to see that like you pull up in the tailgate lot uh, and everything was cool. 
tailgating two stars though. You're giving two stars because it sounds, I had fun. And it sounds like I'm giving the benefit of the doubt that maybe they're gonna start getting more people there. There's a couple people that are BYU and Utah people. They're just like, I live here and it's you know fun and why not? So it's cool to see that. And, and they're trying to build this grassroots kind of tailgating thing. And it, it seemed to show. And I had a blast, and like I said, without alcohol, which is cool to see. And I'm not sure a lot of schools can pull that off. So I'm gonna give Weaver the benefit of the doubt and give him two stars in tailgating. Now, the critiques to get more stars. Weaver State Athletic Department, if you ever come across this, one, thank you for showing me a great time. Two, that $10 lot right by the entry, awesome. But you you gotta make some RV spaces. Like, do it like Montana where you roll in and it's just RV row. Like, you got drive through RV row. And that $10 lot should be people that are tailgating. And that other lot where you had media parking should be like more of your like, we're just trying to park our car and drop off, which is what it seemed to be. But really, like, make it that. The fact that allegedly uh, the people I was hanging out with at first had to move the cone to get themselves in at 9 a.m. because there was no staff there. Um, you know, it's a little odd. I come from a school where the RV lot opens at, I believe, six, somewhere between 6 and 8 p.m. on Thursday. On Thursday before games, you can go park your RV and camp out. And it sounds like at Weber State, you cannot camp out. And uh, it didn't seem like anyone was closing the lot, once again, because I think the staff just left after the game started. But I'm pretty sure they wouldn't have been thrilled had you stayed there either, because all the RVs, by the time I left, and I left pretty late after the game, uh, there's only one RV still in the lot, and I imagine it left. So find a way to cultivate that. I get it's in an urban environment. It's a little bit harder to do. But you had you had the energy today or yesterday. Build on it. That's how you get more stars. And I think one thing I hit on, like, that stadium, dude, or that tailgate lot, how it's up on that ridge. You can see those mountains and the desert on par with all, all, anywhere else I've been. Um, so that was really cool. You Weaver fans, like, go from 9 to kickoff because that view, that view alone is worth it. Like, I would hang out all day in that view. I get you guys live there, so maybe you're a little spoiled, but, I mean, it was kind of off and on rain, so you got to see the rain coming across the desert, and then you're right at the toe of those mountains. Like, scenery-wise, just beautiful. We'll get into more of that with the stadium. Uh, but just where the parking lot is, beautiful views. I could easily spend all day there, so you should. Moving on to the stay, or game day atmosphere. Game day atmosphere. Big game for Weber State. Uh, their stadium holds about 17,000. I'll put the number on the screen. Uh, it was not full. I think they're about 6,000 seats short. So atmosphere was a little, little, uh, it was good. It was good. From what I heard, Weber State, that was one of their bigger games. It was still fun. A lot of people having fun. A lot of kids having fun, which is what's important to build the next generation of fans. Unfortunately, because Weber State's been a little bit down in the draws as far as football goes for a while until recently, uh, a lot of the current alumni and current students aren't used to football success. So that atmosphere is kind of missing, but their kids were just having a great time. Like little kids, youth football, and that's how that next generation is gonna be born. So that's what was so cool of them to see is kind of embrace that. Like, make it fun for kids. Because kids, when they go to college, make them want to go to Weber, right? So I think that's kind of where their game day atmosphere is at, is aiming more at getting the next Wildcat generations in there. Um, so right now, because of that, uh, I'm giving it two, two stars. Two, two and a half stars. Two and a half stars because it was fun to see all those kids and there were people into it. The student section stood the whole game, that was awesome. Critiques to get more stars. Y'all, I, I think Jay Hill needs to hire me. I solved your offensive woes. Students, man, you can't start let's go Weber chance on offense, especially in the red zone. Like that's like football fan 101. You're quiet on offense, you're loud on defense. They got a lot of chance going. Uh, during. Oh, and I forgot in a pro, I should have mentioned. Apparently, Weber State has national championship winning cheer and dance teams. So, that's another why I have to, That will get an extra quarter star. Two and three quarter star atmosphere for Weber State. That is where I'll go. The dance team and the cheerleaders were awesome. 
getting the fans involved was a little bit harder. So if they can do their routines and they are awesome, and they can do cool stunts. Um, but gotta get those fans more involved, guys. So that's but awesome to see them. Back to the critiques, the band, man. I heard Utah has like really good high school bands. Weber State has a very, I won't say bad, small. It's so small that it makes it really hard for them to be good, which is kind of part of game day atmosphere. Now, unless you're Kyler Neal, you don't like bands, right up your alley, my friend. But as most college football fans would agree, bands are part of the pageantry. Weber State's is very small. I don't know how they can't get a bigger one. Also, uh, the South End Zone, or South Stand, was full of students and away fans and they was having a great time and it was packed and that's where a lot of the kids were. It was up on the grass and knoll and they are playing football. Uh, the mezzanine, like people were having a blast. North end zone, a little quiet. Or north end zone, north side stand, a little quiet. So game day atmosphere could be improved. It was just, this, this is the biggest game they've had in a long, long time. And I was on field level and it was not loud. Team seemed to only really cheer on really important third downs, like or the, the students and the fans. It just didn't. It didn't get loud. It didn't feel. There was no tension. There was no feel that this is probably the biggest out of conference game Weber State's probably ever hosted at home. You know, that was that was lacking, and it was cool to see kids having fun. Cause it's fun to be around people having fun. But you got a winning football team. You need to turn that Stewart Stadium into a fortress. Because you got the team that can do it, but you're not helping them right now. That's what I would challenge Weber State people to do. Start getting more into the game. Whether, you know, not on offense, start cheering like you were on offense, on defense. And that's a big step that might get you to that three star. I really want to drop them to 2.5 now, but I'm going to stick at my 2.75. I'm sorry, it started to rain. I don't know how that feels with the audio, but. Um, 2.75 stars for the game day atmosphere. Stadium, freaking beautiful, beautiful, beautiful stadium. I've been fortunate enough to go to a lot of places, which is why this has started. I think I've said that before, but I've reported this a couple times now because I'm too long, too short. Hopefully this is the Goldilocks. Um, beautiful stadium. Outside of the Rose Bowl, probably my favorite stadium. Like, uh, it's in terms of scenery, right? Uh, you get that, you're down in the desert. So you have all that desert out there. And then you have all these different mountain ranges popping up. You're right at the toe of one, Mount Ogden. And these are big, big mountains. Like, I know Montana people are going to be like, what? We have a really good, you know, scenery and everything too. But like, one, well, not from your tailgating lot. Your tailgating lot is cool. It's on the river. It's awesome. These guys are up on a hill and you can see out in the desert and all the mountains. The mountain ranges, not just the mountains. But it lives in a mountain town. It has a mountain, but like this is this is different. This is just different, man. This is like you can just look out in the desert for miles, and then you see the mountains poking up. Maybe the Waihees, I don't know. And then you're like on the Wada, Wabash, or Unitas, or something mountain range right there that just pops up right at the stadium's freaking base. Beautiful scenery, and that sunset you get reminded me so much of the Rose Bowl, uh, but different. Rose Bowl, you get those. Specific, what most people are used to, like the purples, the pinks, the the blues, kind of in a sunset. This was those reds and oranges. This was a desert sunset, you know. Which there's only so many places on in the United States where you can get that kind of Sonora kind of sunset, and this was one of them. It was so cool to see. I got a tip to go up to the South Stand and get some pictures of it. Hopefully, pop them up here. But I missed the peak of it because I went during halftime. Um, and about 8 o'clock, it really hit, and I was like, dang, I should go crawl up there and take some photos. Um, but I didn't make it back up. But otherwise, the south side of the stadium is literally built in to the hill, which is cool and classic, and I like it. But it's also like being anchored by like stumps. I kid you not, like at the top, they have stumps. I don't know if they're anchoring it in, but they're, they're there. It was just cool, weird to see. The bathroom itself on that south side stand were very nice. So like, at least on that part, like A plus. Um, they could use some work. They have all this brush land behind it, but it has like janky signs that say like, no trespassing or authorized personnel only. It's just, it's just a hill with bushes. It's not mowed, it's not anything. It was just like weird, you know? It's just like weird. 
Um, but then they, you kind of go down in this big mezzanine area where everybody goes, and that was really, really cool. It's right next to a brand new spanking, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful football facility, like weight room and locker room and everything. That was awesome. Um, the mezzanine was really cool with the entrance gates. And then you get over to the North Stands, and the North Stands where more of the alumni are, and it's a little, like beautiful with the press box, and I got to peek into one of the suites. Suites are awesome. I don't know how much they cost. We'll try to get that information for you and put it on the screen. So you saw a number, you did it. And uh, beautiful stadium. No bowels, which was weird. Like the bowels are all the athletic office or the uh, locker rooms. And then obviously on the other side, the hill. So that mezzanine is where everything kind of is. And they bring in food trucks and, you know, coffee and stuff like that to kind of fill the, the game day concessions, which was kind of cool. Uh, and a lot of people kind of mingle and hang out there. So that was cool. All in all, the stadium, three stars. So, I know people are probably like, wait, what? Scenery, beautiful, beautiful. And I'm sorry, some Weaver people are probably gonna be mad, but we spent a wonderful weekend together. I'm just treating, just saying how it is. And hopefully you guys in your athletic department can build upon this as an away fan who came and visited your stadium. Uh, beautiful stadium. You got so much working for you. Capitalize on those views, you know. And then if you're gonna do some renovations, I'm assuming it's that south stand. Get rid of the track. <laughs> Tracks outdate stadiums. Fact. I will be shocked if I ever give a stadium with a track around it a five star. That and temporary bleachers. But they get props because they don't have temporary bleachers. That being said, it's a little big. They probably could make it more to their size. If that's the biggest game they've had in a while. At least, you know, not playoff game wise. And they only drew 11,000 or something, which is still, it's a very respectable number. That's, that's not what I'm saying. But then you have a stadium that holds 17, like math there. You probably could afford to lose at least 5,000 seats while you grow this thing. And then if it gets bigger, then deal with that when it comes or add some temporary spots. It's okay to have temporary bleachers if it's because your stadium is full. It's not okay to have temporary bleachers when they act as permanent bleachers in your stadium because you just don't have another side or whatever. Um, there's a lot of reasons you could do that. That's where you'll get knocked for that. But try to make that game day atmosphere more intense in that stadium would be great. Um, and also it was weird not having the bowels of the stadium, but I guess that mezzanine was fun. So that's why three stars uh, for Stewart Stadium. Affordability. Is it worth taking you and your family to a game at Weber State? I'll say yes. So, I talked to some people, a lot of people, obviously, and there's differing opinions on affordability. And these are all people that live, read, Weber, right? So these are the people worth listening to. Some say uh, they tend to cater to a premium fan base, which is scary, and I get why they do that. Um, and others say they love the price of tickets. I don't know what the GA general mission was, because once again, shout out FCS Nation Radio 1 for getting me the... Uh, the uh, media credential to be on the field and everything and basically get it for free um, but all in all the tickets seem nice and from what I've learned is right now the way Weber State is a lot of these Weber State fans buy more tickets than they're going to use so like if you have a family like you might buy a, an extra ticket I got offered so many like hey we've got a ticket here we've got a ticket here come sit with us here um, so had I not been able to get in it seems like I would have been able to get in for free. That being said, single game tickets were affordable. Um, here's the list of like the prices. I think so at least, right? Uh, it could be different. Price is always relative, depending on what part of the country you live in and you know your economic status. Uh, some people will find $15 expensive and other people waste $15 like on stupid stuff every second. Um, but as someone that is more close to like median income, uh, I thought it was affordable. Um, and the cool thing with how I kind of touched on with the stadium is the fact that they don't have actual stadium concessions. Uh, they have those food trucks. So you're supporting small entrepreneurs like the Burger Bus and all those places I told you kind of came in uh, instead of like being charged $9 for a hot dog. So that was cool and it made it more affordable. That they have these food trucks that are actually ran by real people and not necessarily Weber State University um, that help keep the cost down of like meal and soda and stuff like that for drink. Now obviously they don't serve beer in the stadium, so we don't know what beer prices would be. It looks like you can in the suites. 
I saw somebody walking around with what I'm pretty sure it was a cup of beer. Um, but in the suites, I don't know if they even pay for it. Uh, so something, if you're looking to go to a game and you have the money, I guess, call up the Weber State ticket office and ask them about suites and then maybe you know, verify this information on the beer and I'll find out if I can, but I doubt it. Um, but, uh, I mean, beer at college games is something that's becoming rather new. Most people, I think, are used to not having it, which is why tailgating was so important. Um, so, uh, all in all, affordability-wise, I thought it was very affordable. Now, to critique it, to listen to my friend, I've given it four stars. Four stars on affordability. Um, to critique it, from what I've been told by some people, you know, taking both sides of the argument in, uh, I do agree with the negative side of it that right now, especially which we talked on with game day atmosphere and stadium itself, quantity might be more important than quality right now. It seems like Weber State does really try to reward their big donors, which they don't have that many of from what I could tell. The, the premium experience has to be more than a seat back chair. The fact that that's like an expensive ticket just gets you a seat back chair now, people can buy seat back chairs. They've been able to for 15, 20 years now and just bring it into the game. Like you can't be charging what you're charging and just benefiting as, oh, you get to sit on the 50 and get a seat back chair. So I get how they really do start to kind of increase that ticket price the closer to the 50 yard line you get and what they consider a premium seat, which for most stadiums would not be a premium seat. That would just be like a, a more than general mission seat. But all in all general mission seems it was packed. So people obviously are okay with the price of general mission. It was that north side of the stadium where it looks like they're trying to push more premium that was buried. So I think they could approve on that. Now, if you're just looking to go have a good time and pay, I think it was $15 or whatever, for $20 maybe for G GA, man, people were having a blast over there, families, awesome. So affordability-wise, that that I give it a four star. So th that's where we're at, right? Tailgating, two stars. Uh, game day atmosphere, I wanted to go back to two and a half, but I will stick with my 2.75 star. Uh, Stadium three, affordability four stars. That puts Weber State at number one and also last because you know they're the first one to do it. So enjoy first while you have it and hopefully you won't be in last after we review the next couple ones. Um, final thoughts, very cool stadium to go to. Almost flirting with bucket list stadiums. Flirting with it, like I said, it's basically uh, Rose Bowl light in terms of scenery, um, affordable. If you are trying to go with a family, there's probably not a more wholesome family experience at that price level in the entire country. Fact. Like, the fact that so many people were having fun without alcohol, that also means there's less of those drunk interactions that might ruin game day experiences for people when you're not the drunk one. And you've got that loud guy behind you or that lady who keeps, like, I don't know, falling down or... You know, people getting in fights. Like, that stuff just doesn't happen usually when you exclude the alcohol factor. So, which is why they have family-friendly sections in almost every other, like, in every NFL stadium. Um, this whole facility is basically a family-friendly environment. So, if you're looking for an affordable way, and Salt Lake being in a hub, too. Like, I know I wasn't going to talk about getting there. Uh, it's 40 minutes. Like, if you're looking for a family-friendly football game, to watch Division One football. FCS is Division One football, everybody. To watch a D1 football game at that price, there's nowhere else that wholesome in the entire country. And at the FCS level, there's no better scenery I've ever seen in the entire country. And like I said, I've been to the FBS level other than the Rose Bowl. I don't think there's better scenery in the entire country so far. So, worth it. If your team plays Weber State, you just go. You, 100% double thumbs up. If your team plays Weber State, you should make the trip. I give it that. I know the star ratings might look like, I don't know how everybody else is gonna start cracking out in star ratings, but uh, right now, even if this is one of the lower star ratings, just cause I, I feel like it might end up being, it's 100% a double, it's, a, it's just, just a go-to, especially if you have a family. If you have a family, go to it. Anyways, thank you guys for tuning in to the Away Fan. Uh, we're on the road. Next up will probably be either Moscow, Idaho, Cheney, Washington, or Pocatello, Idaho. And then I do have some stuff recorded from Bloomington. 
that I was at last weekend. I just didn't do as much, but I'll probably still do a video just because why not get it out of the way. And that's where it says it's not always going to be FCS. But thank you guys for tuning in. Kept it under 30 minutes. Woohoo, me. Anyways, uh, yeah, cool. Uh, we'll see you guys in the next Away fans. Stewart Stadium, double thumbs up. See it.